Welcome everyone. Thank you for being there. And let's talk about the agenda of the day. Actually, what we have done is we have created three session series titled Breaking the Circle of Trauma. And the three sessions that we are going to do are going to be knowing and understanding trauma and how to build your roadmap of breaking the cycle, which we are going to do today. The next one is going to be what we call legacy burdens. So this is before we go into trauma of your this life, there are also legacy that you inherit coming from your parents, from your environment. And it's good to work on them, clear them up, because then this gives you space to work on your real thing that you had in this lifetime. And the third session, uh, we are going to work on traumas around childbirth, early childhood. So those those areas, because they form the basis of all the issues that we face later on into a year. So those will be three elements, uh, three three things we, we are going to do. Okay. So the topic today is, is about knowing. And what we are going to do is, is we are going to get into the uh, a bit of understanding around trauma. I know the subject is sensitive. It is, uh, it is something that what I bring is from my personal journey and also by working with more than 1,000 plus people who appear to find similar roadmap to what I'm going to present to you. Uh, we, will, we will use those elements to then start to help build inner resources within you. And then we are going to take one example, which is a simple one, uh, that we will go deep inside, see what we can do with love and healing. And then we will support that with the biofield tuning, using tuning forks to see that whatever has come up gets resolved in a way. And then of course, at the end, we will come back and do a reflection Q and A, etc. So that is our story. So let's get into the topic of trauma. I think before we get into the, the story, let's actually start to have some definition. So there are two, uh, at least experts in my experience uh, that have good understanding of what is trauma. One is coming from Gaber Mate, who is well known for his work on mental health issues, especially addictions. He recently actually created a movie, featured in a movie called Wisdom of Trauma. So if you have not heard or seen it, I really recommend that you have a look at it. It's very, very well done. And he explained that trauma is not what happened to you, but what happens inside of you as a result of what happened to you. So it is how your inner system learns to cope with what happened to you. And this is why same trauma can have different effects and different ways it shows up in different people. The other person which is really very well known is uh, Basil van der Klok. He's, he spent all his life studying how children and adults adapt to traumatic experiences. He has a book which is a beautiful piece of work called Body Keeps Score. And if somebody wants to understand deeply the subject of how trauma affect your life, I would highly recommend. And he says that the, that the events that happen in our lifetime, especially early childhood, leaves us stuck in a state of helplessness and terror. And hence, we always perceive the world from that place of danger throughout our life. I want you to leave and understand these two definitions with you. So let it sink in. So both of them kind of say that trauma is not the event, because sometimes we have, we have associated the word trauma with event. It is the mechanics, it is the impact of how that time trauma is perceived by your inner world, inner system, and reacts to it. 
Now, the other thing is, what does trauma do to you? Now, Richard Short, which is who is who is actually, he began his career as a is a systemic family therapist and an academician, and he has spent 40 years in this area, and he has created a system called IFS, and we use elements of IFS in our every Sunday work, and he explained that when someone goes through a traumatic event or incident it's like uh, so the metaphor i always use is let's imagine that you have uh, let's imagine a parliament right a parliament has has different ministers of uh, education health uh, finance etc and everybody has their portfolio and for this whole organization to work everybody must work on their portfolios now when we are born we come with all the portfolios and all the abilities in our life playfulness fun experiencing life etc we are born with all capabilities when we come in now imagine in the parliament if there is a catastrophe and the minister of let's say security is assigned to go and work on finance or a minister of finance has to go in and do the work of security because it has to do non-security that secu the finance part starts to lag there's nobody doing finance and by the way when the event happens this assignment almost becomes permanent so there is nobody taking care of finance and everybody's taking care of security now as we grow older Imagine to have a parliament, if you take the metaphor of parliament, where most people in the parliament are actually not assigned to their original task. Why? Because something happened and they got reassigned to another condition and never went back to their original assignment. Now, personally, I have gone through many things from a, what we call trauma so i've had uh, sexual abuse early age i was bullied early childhood workplace and that had a lot of impact so what does trauma do so that had a lot of so my personal experience has been it created this whole thing about numbing so i would just go numb i would not feel anything or sense anything use television or many other ways to play around that numbing lost trust on myself and others it was very difficult for me to trust anyone uh, i would judge the world from the way i see it so which is very untrustworthy and to some extent uh, somebody will come and will literally stab in your back so always watching out because that's how it was when i had my early childhood stuff and as a health impact, I went through burnouts, migraines, obesity, heart arrhythmia. So I had my share of things. I still have part of them still working. And that's what it did to me. Now, as I said, each one of us have different ways by which we do express the effects of trauma. Now, is there a what is on the other side of the tunnel? So, of course, we, when we start working on traumas, we need to see what is on the other side, okay? And it comes to me two things, which I have also from my personal experience and for people that I've studied, worked with, is most successful people always attribute their success to traumas and difficulty in their lives. And there's a reason for that. Because when you are in that place, you build this incredible inner muscle because you have to overcome the trauma. So your trauma starts to become your gift for yourself and for the people you serve in whatever form. The second thing is you achieve something that you can only dream of. Because from that place, what you have, the muscles, which is the inner capability, which cannot come any other way because you have to go through those extreme conditions to learn, to survive. The only thing you have to do is to dream. And when you dream, 
you go beyond whatever you have dreamt for. The events in your life, they become your guide. As you start to free yourself from traumas, you see the light and you go towards something that you actually could never dream of. And of course, you can read all the successful people. They say, I am somebody which is very simple in my life, but I can tell you I'm living life I could not have dreamt. But because of so many things I learned in those times when I had to go through trauma. Now, let's talk about roadmap because you are here. Because, of course, how do you do? And I'm I'm trying to be very simplistic uh, to keep it within our context. But it just came to me that there are three things that I did, and I see I work a lot with people, and this is what I do. First is start to understand the the thing trauma, and sometimes we stay away from it. We feel it is very very difficult because it has been difficult. So understanding it, you befriend it. You start to know what is on the other side of the tunnel. And there are four best names that I would give, which are people that actually do, do a lot of, they have done beautiful work. And I really always recommend to Gabor Mate, Richard Schwartz, uh, Basil van der Klock, and Peter Levine. Okay, Peter Levine is a lot about somatic trauma is stored in the body physically. So that's what I would do. Spend time to learn and understand so that you know that this is not something that you are alone in it. There have been a lot of people and there's a lot of work which has been done. So that's what I do. That's what I would recommend. The second thing I would recommend is uh, start working on trauma release. And you start simple don't have to start with all the difficult things. Okay, you start on this healing journey of trauma and know that your system will guide you. Your inner system, the inner intelligence is so powerful that it will guide you. So trust on it. However, I always recommend to take a mentor or guide or someone that you can rely on. Because when you go through those difficult days, you need somebody next to you or you may need somebody to be not far from you and the last thing is build resources and today i'm going to give you some resources but resources are the place to go when you feel low okay and these are very simple things they are not very complicated ones but they are immensely useful especially when you go through the dark night of soul as we call it the third thing is have a life purpose. There's something inside of you that has to look for a North Star, the GPS coordinate to where you want to go, because that desire, that thing pulls you. And if you read any of the people that have gone through darkest of the time and come out, they always had a dream purpose, something that they wanted to do. That North Star will pull you out from the darkest of the places because your brain has this incredible center, which is which once you feed in literally GPS, it'll pull you out, help you to go there. And, uh, and trust me, having that there will be dark night of souls when you start to process, but it will help you during that period and with all the other things that I said before, but you will come out shining. Now, let's go to do some work ourselves. So, and I want you to do is we'll start by bringing energy into you and building your resources. And just keep in mind, I will keep it, of course, for you. But these are resources that you can use at any time. You don't have to use them now, but just remind yourself to use these resources whenever you would need, OK? So just start by closing your eyes. 
and see if you can focus on your breathing. Breathing in and out of your body. Just notice how the breath goes out and comes back in. Now imagine a place where you feel completely safe. A place you have been to or a place in your imagination. Imagine this place in as much detail as possible. A place where you feel completely safe. Where are you? And what do you see? time of day and what time of year is it? Is it warm or cold? What do you hear? Can you smell? What feel do you have in this place? How does your body react to this safe place? What could make this place even more safer? make that possible. Give a name to this place. Imagine you're floating 500 feet into the air and you bring in a white light from the heavens. Bring it into your head. Fill up your head. Let it flow into your throat. Fill it up into your hair, into your shoulders, into your arms, into your chest. into your stomach, into your legs, and through your feet, it goes deep into Mother Earth. It picks up all the energy, all the power of Mother Earth, and comes back 
through your feet, into your legs, fill it up. Into your belly, fill it, fill up your stomach. Into your chest. Into your shoulders, into your arms. Into your throat, into your head. And your body is filled with this beautiful white light, with the power of Mother Earth into every cell of your body. Now imagine a secure container or a vault. This is a place you can put any distressing material in. It's big, it is stable with a lock and can only be opened by you. It can be a box, a chair, a chest, a jar, a pot. Use your imagination to create this vault. Can you now store in this everything that you feel you cannot endure? And remind yourself that at any time during the process today, you can bring in the world store things that create too much psychological reactions. It will be kept safe in the world till you wish to open and work in it to process it. Now think of any one trauma or something that you don't feel comfortable about in your life and see if you can bring it from the world which you feel safe to work here today. Take a moment to think about it, take it out of the world and bring it here work today. Just settle in. See that you're body is comfortable, it is soft and feels settled in. You can keep your eyes closed and just breathe a little slower and deeper than usual into your heart. Find an easy rhythm that's comfortable for you. And allow the breathing to be slower and deeper than usual. And as you breathe effortlessly, you can inform your system that is working in your leadership effortlessly. Now 
think about the trauma or the issue, you won't work. And as you think of this, make an invitation now and notice where you feel it in or around your body. I'm just going to invite you to stay a little longer with it, with your body and the sensation that are there. And thank this part not to overwhelm you. And if there's anything that this part wants you, let you know. Just listen to it and feel it in and around your body. See if there is something in there that might need some of your attention. So just make some space for the thoughts and your emotions. So we could let you know and it might have some surprising things to tell you. In other words, see if you could be mindfully curious about, about what it wants you to know. And if you could get to that curious place, just ask it, what it wants to know about itself and its intention for you. What are its intention for you? And wait for an answer. Thank it for letting you know, and then ask another question. S ask it what it is afraid would happen if it didn't do this job inside of you. And again, wait for an answer. What it is afraid would happen if it didn't do this. And if you got an answer to that question, then it told you about what it is protecting you from. So if possible, extend some appreciation to it or compassion for it and see how it reacts to that. Now 
never ask it, how old were you when it all started? Notice the age it tells you. And ask it if you could heal or change what it protects, would you would it allow you to heal? And again wait for an answer. If it doesn't allow or is hesitant, then ask it what needs to happen for it to allow you to heal. if you can thank it for letting you know whatever it did. Now connect to the younger age when it all started and see this younger you in front of you. See if you can connect to this younger you Feel it in or around your body and notice where you feel it. Notice how you feel towards this younger you. What kind of emotions you feel for this younger you that you see in front of you? See if you can show some compassion towards the younger you and check whether the younger you is looking at you or away from you. See if you can get closer to the younger you. And ask it if it is willing to share to you its story, what it went through, the events, the emotions, the beliefs. And you can ask the younger you not to overwhelm you because you are here to listen in love, in peace. So let the younger you share its story, the events, the emotion, the beliefs. Now ask the younger you, what should have happened that did not happen then? And listen to the answer to this question. What should have happened instead or what happened? your 
and own words, assure the younger you that you will not let it happen and that this happened in the past. Ask the younger you if it would like to move to a more safer place of his choice. So move away from the past and move to a safer place of his choice. And see what it says. If it is saying no or is it reluctant, then ask it what needs to happen for it to allow you and assure you, the younger you, for it to leave the place in the past and come to a more safer place. What needs to happen? Ask it if it is ready to release all it went through, either into air, into water, into light, into fire, or into earth. Whatever it chooses, you are going to help it release all its memories, emotions it believes, into water, or air, light, fire, or earth. Let it choose. And now, help it release those memories, emotions, and beliefs into whatever it chose. Till it is done. with it if it wants to release anything else and if it says yes help it release Now ask it what qualities it missed that it would like to invite into life now. What qualities it would like to invite now. And see those qualities integrate into each and every cell of your body now. Now ask to the younger self where it would like to go, to a safer place of his choice. It can come with you or to go to any other place. 
let it choose. Let's see it going to this place. And being there. Feeling safe. And you can tell the younger self that you are going to check in occasionally. Thank all parts of you to allow it to heal. Thank everyone. Thank the little one. Thank all parts of you for allowing you to heal. And then when it feels complete, just follow your breath back and begin to slowly open your eyes and see if you could like to write down any inner wisdom that comes in or stay in this place while I prepare for the tuning forks. I'm going to guide you into sound healing using tuning forks. So we will open up the two centers, one on the top of the head, one on the bottom of our feet. And you can lie in a comfortable position. You can sit, just feel comfortable. Just take a moment to remind yourself of something you wish for you. And I will be doing breathing in a special way. So you will hear me a lot breathing so i will tell you to breathe so the breath is a little bit different than usual we we'll demonstrate to you so you breathe in with your with your nose and imagine the breath is coming from top of your head into your chest into your belly so you fill it up and then when you breathe out you're breathing from your mouth as if you're breathing into the ground so you're opening this channel Breathing top of your head into your belly and then breathing out into the ground. So we will keep breathing occasionally. I'm not wanting you to hyperventilate. So just follow when I tell you. And then you will hear me say as well. Ah, so release. And it's a release. Okay. And again, just to say if you don't feel very well, if you don't like the tuning fork sound, just mute it and you don't have to continue to hear that. Okay. Now stay in a comfortable position and we're going to begin. Think of your wish. So I start at the bottom of your feet. I'm going to open the channel 
that helps to connect to Mother Earth, and it's in, in the south pole, that is what is called the Earth Star. So I'm just below your feet, about one foot below your feet. I'm pointing the tuning fork toward your feet so that the sound goes through the backbone and up to, a, to the top of your head. So take a breath. Take another breath. There's something which is blocking into the chest, but that's okay, just breathe. Seems to be good. Take a breath. I'm going to ground you now. So take a breath in. Not yet. Yeah, there you go. So I've grounded you, now I'm going to go to the top of the head, North Pole. So this is the connection to divine, this is the connection to the higher self. So the so tuning fork is pointing towards your head, going through the backbone, into Mother Earth, through your feet. Take a breath. Okay, so I'm going to just run a pendulum just to see where the group energy is, where does it want to work. I'm going to just work to the different centers. Okay, it's working on hot. Okay, so we're going to work on the heart center, so it is on the left side of your chest and uh, I'm just going to start from the time of your birth and if something comes up I'm going to tell you this is the age and this kind of emotion is coming 
and just see what it means for you. And all you have to do is to just bring it up and just stay with that while I work to release whatever is underlying thing behind it. Okay, so that's what you'll do. So I'm starting from your birth, left side of your heart. So this is where we store all our sadness, griefs or losses. Five years. So see if anybody or if you have something, you know, five years where there was a huge loss that you could never speak about. You cannot speak about it, even now. It's stuck in your throat. Just take a breath. And take another breath and do like me. Okay, so just stay with that and I'm going to work with another tuning fork. This is to re remove whatever is coming up there and stay whatever came up. Let's keep breathing. <sighs> if you want to make noise, it's okay. <sighs> Still coming up into the into the throat, so whatever feels stuck. <sighs> yeah, that got released. I'm going to keep going. Twenty twenty one. If somebody has anything around twenty twenty one that is coming up, actually, it got cleared. Take a breath. Twenty-four, twenty-five. Loss. I'm going to go back with the other tuning fork to release. Take a breath and ah, always make noise. Ah, Take a breath. Whatever has come up, 
we are going to release it out. with that I'm going to just lock it in so that the body continues processing for the next 24 48 hours I'm going to surround you with the 528 hertz cocoon. Just stay with that and relax. burdens. I'm going to leave this one practice for you and I'm going to send it to the ones who are in the group. Is is a very nice way which works very powerfully about writing. So four days writing exercise that you can do. So if there's a topic that comes out which is very difficult so you can do this in a safe way which is write for 20 minutes with a certain way keep writing, you take a topic, write on top of the topic, then you write continuously for 20 minutes, you do not take the pen up, and you write on the topic, and once it's finished, you can take that page, you can burn it, you can you can shred it and throw it into water, and then repeat it for four days, for four consecutive days, and you will see how that subject, whatever it is, starts to diminish in its intense intensity for you. It's a very powerful way. There's a lot of research around that and I'm going to share in the group. So if you want, you can always join.